Hi everybody, this is a short video on basic soldering techniques and the basic equipment uh, that you would be required uh, to solder. Um, uh, what I have here in front of me is um, a temperature controlled soldering arm. Um, it can be switched on. Uh, and you see the temperature just, right, temperature just rises fairly quickly. And I normally, for most components, capacitors, resistors, uh, I normally have it set for around 400 volts or 400 uh, degrees centigrade. Uh, there would be times when you, you would have to turn it down if you have uh, a very fine print. And uh, you have to turn it up if you had a lot of heat sinks or, uh, on the, the PCB and very large heavy PCBs might need uh, higher temperatures to unsolder the uh, the uh, the components. What you'd normally do, uh, you, you would have your uh, your iron, you would normally clean your iron in your wet sponge, damp sponge I should say, and you make sure it's clean, so you normally uh, tin it, put a bit of solder on it, so, and then just rub it on the damp sponge, and your your iron, uh, your bit then is uh, just ready for uh, solving. The other tools you, you need obviously is your your your, your roll of solder. Uh, the solder braid, um, that's that's very good. Uh, it's uh, good on fine print. Um, it snips for cutting the legs off. Uh, capacitors and resistors when you get the mucus they come with long legs and I normally have a little jeweler screwdriver to um, uh, straighten the legs of bend components on the bottom of the PCB. Okay I'm just going to now uh, get a, uh, a PCB out and show you uh, the basic techniques I use for desoldering. This is another tool I left out, um, a solder vacuum tool. It's handy for those that don't have uh, uh, a lot of tools. Uh, it can uh, be useful on the, the larger components like capacitors and uh, resistors on solder the legs. I'm just going to demonstrate this uh, to you now. First thing I do is I normally uh, um, clean up the uh, the item they're going to desolder. Uh, as you can see I have one of these desolder already. I'm going to do the one right beside it. Put a bit of fresh solder on it. And the leg is bent over so what I do is use my screwdriver to melt the solder and just straighten up the leg. Now I have my solder vacuum pump. Put my iron on it. To leave it on it long enough so the solder melts. Place your vacuum pump over it and it removes the solder. I'm just going to show you. As you can see the component is actually loose in the on the board. Um, that's good for uh, soldering on larger print with capacitors, resistors. But for smaller print, it can uh, lead to damage um, on the print. Uh, I wouldn't use it for uh, the likes of uh, uh, desoldering uh, ICs or chips or small components. I'd only use it for the larger stuff. Right, so I'll get uh, to it, show you another desolder method. This time I'm going to show you how to remove a component, a capacitor, using a uh, solder braid and the solder iron. I have the solder and iron uh, set for 400 degrees at the moment. Uh, I might just bring it down a bit because uh, I'm going to bring it down to about 350 for this. I start by putting some fresh solder on the component to be 
Ну, да, вот. Then I use my solar braid. Comes in rolls. You can get larger rolls than this. I like the small rolls. Put a bit of heat on it. Then put the heat on the component first. Helps to melt it. Okay. And that's the component out. To resolve it, it's the reverse of that. I'm just going to put the component back in. The component is back in the board now, and I have um, bent the legs over so the component doesn't fall out of the PCB whilst I'm getting ready for solder. First thing I do is I clean up my uh, solder and iron by rubbing it on the wet sponge, uh, making sure the tip is clean and uh, to clean it put a small dab of solder on the tip and rub it on your wet sponge on your solder station. Now we've got the solder component. I'll stick a bit of uh, solder on the tip my iron it to the component and then just add the solder to it. A bit of solder on the component, or sorry, a bit of solder on the iron tip. That solder then touches the component and then just add your, the amount of solder you need. For larger components you would need more solder uh, than the smaller ones so you might have to add quite a bit for a large component. Beside that we have a uh, an IC, 18 pin IC. It would be the same technique to uh, remove that as well. So I'm just going to do that. I freshen up the solder. Now we have this all the legs uh, freshened up. I got my solder wick. Clean the tip of my iron on the sponge, and start by just touching the one uh, of the legs. Okay, and as this the wick get soaked in uh, solder you have to use a fresh spot. Keep moving up the solder wick. And just check the far side to make sure they're all. Now we got this side to do. Be careful you don't uh, unsolder these little surface mounters uh, Devices beside it, little capacitors. But you won't know the value in them if you lose them. A couple of passes will soak up all this. And you could use your vacuum pump, but uh, I would uh, uh, prefer this. Okay. the chip out. So we're going to solder him back in and normally on a chip or on the IC there is a notch and let it show them where your number one is. Got the IC in now. Uh, just start by cleaning off the tip of my solder iron on the wet sponge. The uh, solder iron is set to about 350 degrees, that's all you would need. You could even get away with about three, uh, 300 degrees uh, for this. So uh, just dab a solder on the 
tip your arm, bring it to your leg of your component. You have to heat the component up um, the leg before you actually put the solder on. If you just put the solder directly on like that, it can work. On larger ones, it's, uh, it's difficult on larger components. The heat transfer is better if you have a little bit of solder on the tip of your iron. Then when it's dry with nothing. That's our ICN. Next thing I have to do now is clean the uh, flux off. I use isopropanol alcohol, normally got IPA, they call it. A bit of squirt on it. And then uh, clean it up. I hope that helps you with uh, uh, desoldering parts, uh, saving boards, da uh, saving damage to boards. If you damage print on uh, multi-layer uh, PCBs, uh, you, the board can be uh, a write-off because the uh, the solder points are uh, sandwiched between layers of PCBs with little eyelets or rivets that go through the board. And if they get the the uh, print inside the uh, sandwich layers uh, gets damaged, there's no way you can patch it up. You can't get in at it. You might be able if you could find the other point where it comes out to the outer uh, layer of the PCB. Uh, you might be able to join it up to that if you're lucky. But sometimes you're not. You just can't get at them. Thanks for watching.